So the drizzle season has been out for a few days now, and I gotta say, I'm surprised. What I thought would end up being the worst season we've had so far in Splatoon 3 is turning out to be one of the best. Now don't get me wrong, even though I have a ton of good things to say, there's also a fair share of things that I don't like. And I do think that Nintendo marketed this season terribly, which contributed to a lot of people's negative perception of the season before it even released. We're gonna talk about all that and more in just a second, but first, if you enjoy the video and wanna support my content, hit that subscribe button. We're getting close to 30,000 subscribers, and I'd like to hit it before the end of the year. With that being said, let's get into it. So we're gonna start off with the best part of this whole season, the new stages. Both Crab Lake Capital and Ship Shape Cargo are probably the best exclusive Splatoon 3 stages that we've gotten, and there's a few reasons for that. I'll talk about Crab Lake first, which is the one that Nintendo seemed to hype up a bit more. This map is such a nice change of pace because it doesn't feel like a super crammed hallway for once. It's very flat and open, but even with that, this map has a ton of different routes and flank options. This stage really reminds me of Splatoon 1's version of Hammerhead Bridge, which I did miss. Now, I do have a couple issues with this map. One, Splat Zones just isn't very good on it. I think the main reason for that is they kept this grate directly above the zone, and that just leads to a hectic cluster in mid that isn't really fun for anyone. My only other issue with this map is it once again seems like a map that heavily favors ranged weapons like Splatlings and Chargers. If you're a Tetra user like me, you're not going to have a ton of fun on this stage. I did try Gluga Duelies here, however, and I have to say that I think this is the best Gluga stage in the entire game. Give it a try if you haven't already. The stage I like even more is Ship Shape Cargo. This map is just great. Awesome layout, different paths, and best of all, a ton of paintable walls. Not to mention, the usual weapons I tend to use feel great here, so that's also a plus. Other than that, I don't have much to say about this map. It's just fantastic. But yeah, overall, the maps are probably the best part of this season. The new weapons are pretty interesting. I'm sure most of you know by now that the heavy edit splatling is very powerful, although I don't think it's as good as some people are making it out to be. And that's coming from a dually user who gets destroyed by splatlings on a daily basis. Sure, its fire rate is astonishing, but I think its charge time and range balance it out pretty well. It's definitely the best new main weapon we've gotten so far in Splatoon 3 though, that's for certain. The other new weapon that we received was the Dreadringer, which isn't as good. I think the weapon's concept is really interesting, and I actually really like its kit too. The issue is just that the main weapon is too slow. It's a similar fire rate to the Explosher, except this weapon wants to be way more aggressive, so it doesn't work too well. With just a few buffs, I can see this thing being extremely good. And despite its weak state right now, I actually find it quite fun to play casually. As for the new kits, there aren't a lot of them, and none of the ones we got are really weapons that I play, but I am happy for the people that do play these weapons. So far, the most annoying ones to fight for me have been the Sorel Umbrella and the Ballpoint Nouveau. We got three new battle songs in this update, and all three of them are bangers. In my opinion, these are the best battle songs we've gotten in Splatoon 3 so far. And as you guys all know, I'm not really into Splatoon music, so for me to be saying that, these must be pretty good. At the time of recording this video, I haven't gotten the chance to try out Salmonid's Smokeyard in Salmon Run yet, but I really liked it in Splatoon 2, so I'm sure I'll like it here as well. What I did get to try was Big Run, and yes, I got to play a lot of the Grizzco Duelies. I think this weapon is super fun, and while it's not the best Grizzco weapon or anything, it's super fun just plowing through the lesser Salmonids with your dodge rolls. It's just so cool because for all of Splatoon 2, we always wondered what a Grizzco Dually would be like. And now, it's finally reality. This season also added hundreds of new titles, banners, and Hotlantis items, which is amazing. This is something that previous seasons lacked, so it's really nice to see them finally add a lot more. Weirdly enough, Nintendo didn't mention this in the Drizzle Season trailer. Actually, they didn't mention Big Run or the Grizzco Duelies either. They also didn't talk about the upcoming Splatfest, which is the one year anniversary celebration. This actually brings me into another topic, which is the fact that I think the advertising for the Drizzle Season was handled pretty terribly. 
the trailer neglected to mention any of the things I just talked about, as well as a few other things. Why? These are all things that a lot of people would be really excited about. Like if you told me that there's going to be hundreds of new titles and banners as well as the addition of the Grizzco Duelies, my first impressions of this new season would have been a bit more positive. And I think that goes for a lot of other people as well. And seriously, why not mention the Deep Cut Splatfest? That's a pretty big deal if you ask me, and it would have gotten a lot of people excited probably. But instead, they chose to just announce these things on Twitter, so a lot less people ended up seeing them. Also, the trailer puts some weird emphasis on certain things, like the new Adjust Gear feature for example. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad this feature is in the game, but this is very underwhelming after actually getting to try it out. It only works with like 15% of the total gear in the game, and it doesn't even work with shoes. Like, why not just let us raise our glasses to our foreheads or something? But anyway, my point is, I'm not sure why they dedicated a whole section of the trailer to this feature. I feel like this could have been announced on Twitter, meanwhile the trailer could have talked about the other stuff instead. In the end, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I think Nintendo could have definitely avoided a bit of the negative reception the Drizzle Season trailer got if they didn't omit certain topics. The final thing I'll talk about are the patch notes. The patch we received this time was on the smaller side, but I think it was pretty impactful. Small changes such as Tactic Cooler taking longer to recharge, and umbrellas regenerating their shields faster go a long way. And I know some people are wondering what I think about the Zipcaster buffs. Sadly, while I do think the special is much better than it was before, it's still not great. It still has the same armor and longevity issues it had before. So if they just buffed it once more and fixed one of these things, I think it has the potential to be a top tier special. But I am grinding for the golden zipcaster badge right now, so these buffs are greatly appreciated. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised with the drizzle season, and I think that goes for a lot of people based on what I've seen. The trailer made it seem like it would be an extremely weak season, but now that it's actually out, I'm happy to say that's not really the case. But again, I do think Nintendo sort of fumbled that trailer, because leaving out so many details left a really bad impression on a lot of people, including myself. At a time like this when a lot of people are losing interest in the game, they should be trying their hardest to advertise everything a new season has to offer, so more people are enticed to get back on the game. But from the trailer, it doesn't seem like Nintendo has that urgency. But hey, the bottom line is, this season is pretty good, and the game hasn't felt this fun in a long time. Before you guys go, do me a quick favor. Comment down below what you think so far of the Drizzle season. That's it for me guys. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, please like and consider subscribing as that would help out my channel a lot, and I will see you all next time.